New vaccine mandates are rolling out in more parts of the Bay Area. In San Mateo, vaccinations will be required to any event of 50 or more people. That would include the convention center. And San Jose is now requiring proof of vaccination for uh, folks to enter many city buildings and any large event with 50 or more people as well. Well, joining us live now is Dr. Theodore Ruel. He is the chief of pediatric infectious diseases at UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital. Thank you so much, Dr. Ruel, for joining us. Happy to be here. Let's dig deeper into this announcement from Pfizer, the drug company saying its vaccines really work in children. First, I want to get your reaction to this study. So I'm thrilled. Um, many of us have been waiting anxiously for the results of this study, which we've known has been going on for several months. So I think this is a really good news moment for, for us in the Bay Area and across the country and the world, really. So in the test, children are not getting the full dose that an adult would, when I say full dose, as many milligrams as an adult would get. Tell me a little bit about how they came to that decision to only give a portion of the dose and how effective it is in children. That's right. It's, they did a pretty standard approach, which is you start with uh, a, it's called phase one, where they do they find what is the right dose that gives just the amount of effect we want for protection, but doesn't give um, any excessive kind of side effects. And the fact that they landed a little bit smaller makes perfect sense. Kids are both, of course, physically smaller, but they also have really robust immune responses. So this really is kind of right in line with what you would have expected for a dose. And in terms of the time between the two dose uh, regimen, is it a little bit longer because they're finding that is that is a little bit more effective? You know, I think if they studied the same frequency, which is going to be really much easier for operations and kind of rolling mm -hmm. it out. Um, but but I think we might see a different duration of response as well um, afterwards. Of course, a lot of parents want to know about the side effects, what to expect after their children receive the doses. Yeah, and you know I'm a parent of a nine-year-old, and so I'm one of those one of those people, and I'll be following these data closely. I think you know all we have right now is the news release, um, and the news release uh, specified really profound immunogenicity, and they said that there were no safety concerns. So I have to think if there were a big safety signal, they frankly wouldn't have come out with this. But we really do need to see the the data first, which would come out when they release more information closer to filing with FDA. And are you thinking the timeline for actually administering these shots around Halloween, maybe a little bit after? Is that still kind of ring true? That does ring true. This, frankly, I think we had kind of put off our hopes to, to middle of October, so this is uh, even early. I'm hoping that, that it'll be reviewed in the next few weeks and then we might better roll out in, in October. Yeah, ahead of Halloween really would be nice. So a lot of parents still nervous about this. What do you say to parents who aren't quite sure if they're going to get their children vaccinated when these vaccines come out? So I think it's, you know, it's always been one of the few good things about this disease is that children were relatively spared. And we know that kids don't get as severely ill as adults. But I think this last surge has really underscored the importance of this vaccine. We have new variants coming. And we had, as many people know, the biggest pediatric surge since the, since the winter peak. Adults had a really blunt response, but kids made up a huge portion. Just in the, in the most recent recorded uh, week by the CDC, over 200,000 kids across the country got sick. That's thousands of hospitalizations. And we've had sick kids even here in the Bay Area on ventilators. So... While it's less common, it's still severe in kids. And so I'd say for the sake of your kid, it's important to do. But, you know, again, you've heard this message, but I, and, I'll, and I'll echo it. It's also not just protecting your kid. It's protecting other people who can't get vaccines, people who get severe illness, and frankly, just mm -hmm. preventing spread and keeping our schools open. So I think there's a lot of reasons to do it. Um, that, uh, and that I'm just so glad this is here now, particularly for the school-age kids, 5 to 11. This really will help us keep schools open into the fall. All right, Dr. Ruel, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure.